in this video, I'm going to show you how I turn this stack of PC parts into a fully functioning music and video production machine. What's up guys, Brandon here from KDMR Music, the channel that teaches you how to succeed in the music business. Now, if you are new around here, every week we do videos about music marketing, different strategy tips, and sometimes I've gotta show you how to level up your content creation game in videos just like this one. So if you are new around here, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on more videos. Now, um, this has been a long time coming. Now, if you guys have been following me for a little while, if you've been subscribed to the channel, then you know that the output on this channel has slowed down a little bit during the summer, um, both on our YouTube channel and on our podcast. And there's a reason for that. So I put this in a community post a couple weeks ago. But to make a long story short, we were trying to run all of our content creation on this super old laptop it was a dual core processor, not to nerd out on you, but it just was not suitable for the things that we were trying to do with it. Now, we, I actually built a PC that is way, way better than what we had and is going to help us far into the future with our content creation. And so I documented that whole process so that I could show you how it's done. Now, Funny story. So this process, uh, I have built a computer once in my life, and I was 14 when I did it. It's about 14 years later for you math whizzes. And um, yeah, this is only the second time I've ever built a PC from scratch. And let's just say it was not quite like riding a bicycle. So um, during this process, I thought I was just big and bad, and I was going to go ahead and be able to narrate this process for you. As you'll see, there are plenty of times throughout this video where I thought everything was done. I put things in the wrong spots. I was having trouble plugging things in. Your boy was struggling. So you'll see some bloopers, but I wanna go ahead and cut to the video. Um, so just so you know, building a computer, building a computer is not necessarily an easy task, but it is simple if you take your time read the directions, and follow instructions. So watch me. Uh, hopefully this helps, but I'm going to explain to you what parts I used, why I used them, and you'll see a little bit of footage of how I put it together, and you'll see the finished product. You know it works because, uh, well, this is it. This is the computer right here. So spoiler alert, nothing failed. Everything works just fine. So... Um, <laughs> So let's go ahead and cut to the video of me building the computer. All right, you guys. So I'm going to explain uh, these parts you see here and why I chose them. And then we'll get into this build. So uh, there's a lot on the table with me. I'm probably not in focus, but stay with me. So we'll start off with the power supply. We've got an EVGA uh, 500BR, Ron's power supply. Um, to make the long story short, if you're going to be powering a lot of things with your computer, you're going to want more wattage on your power supply. Um, 500 watts is going to be plenty enough, but you could go more if, say, um, you're a musician, you've got a lot of externals, you've got MIDI keyboards and interfaces and a lot of things that are plugging in via USB, then you are going to want to get a beefier power supply to make sure the connection is as strong as possible. So let's move that out of the way. So, next, let's talk about this motherboard. This is an AMD um, MSI Pro Series B450A. Um, to make a long story short, with this motherboard, it's got all of the inputs that I need. Um, I've got, it's got four USB 3 inputs, which is great for external hard drives, SSDs. You can get the fastest transfer speeds outside of Thunderbolt but I'm a PC user and I don't have a lot of Thunderbolt products anyway. So USB 3 is going to be great. Um, this motherboard also supports up to 64 gigs of RAM, um, which is gonna be great for multitasking programs. Um, there was a time where 
Uh, music production was not all that intensive. Those times have changed. We're going to get more into that in a second. But so this is the motherboard. Now, obviously, your motherboard is really the motherboard you have to choose is going to be dictated by your CPU, which is probably where we should have started. So we've got the AMD Ryzen 5 2600. So this is a six core. 12 thread processor um, up to 3.9 gigahertz boosted 3.4 gigahertz base clock speed uh, which again is basically going to give you all the power you need uh, this will help with video rendering um, again a lot of the programs for music production are crazy crazy cpu intensive uh, back in my day it was just fl studio a couple sound fonts but now You've got contact libraries and Nexus and, you know, a million tracks. Pro Tools does a million tracks. So you're going to need a powerful CPU to handle all of that. Now, generally speaking, um, music production is not going to be nearly as intense as video editing. And that is the primary goal of this build is to be able to edit and render video quickly. Now, I've got this with 4K video in mind. But right now, I shoot all 1080p, um, so this is going to be blazing fast for 1080p and still really good for 4K once we make that upgrade. So the Ryzen 5 um, is a great alternative to Intel. Intel i7, i9, i5 processors are still just expensive for the price, so you can get a little bit more bang for your buck by going AMD over Intel. There are other... Uh, pros and cons with going AMD versus Intel. Uh, we won't get into those today. All right, so about that RAM we were talking about. So I've got Corsair Vengeance LPX RAM. I've got two 8 gigabyte sticks for 16 gigs total. Now, again, that motherboard is capable of holding up to 64 gigs of RAM. So if I want to upgrade this later on, I can, and it's as easy as swapping it out. But I'm happy with 16 gigs. That's going to be plenty enough for the video editing that I do. I don't use a lot of After Effects. And so now if you're going to be using After Effects and uh, Premiere at the same time, you should probably upgrade that RAM sooner than later. 32 gigs is what I recommend. But there you go. 16 gigs of Corsair Vengeance LPX RAM. Now, all the programs are going to be installed on this uh, Samsung 970 Evo Plus. This is an M.2 SSD card. So this is your hard drive. Now, again, back with the last time I built a computer, all hard drives were these big spinning disks hard drives, uh, but it's not that way anymore, which is really cool. So you get the really small form factor. This mounts directly onto your motherboard. So um, basically it's the quickest transfer speed you can get. And they're relatively inexpensive. I think this one was, I think it was like 70 bucks. I'll leave all the links in the description so you know exactly how much it costs. This is just an external CD DVD drive because I've got programs from back in the day that I'm going to need to install once we get this up. And of course, this is my graphics card. Now, I do not do a lot of gaming or really any gaming. This is really just for video editing. So I opted to uh, put more money into the processor, the CPU, rather than the graphics card because that's where you're going to get your power for video editing. Um, so this is the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1050 Ti. Uh, it's got four gigs of gaming RAM. Um, or was that six? Nah, four gigs of gaming RAM. Um, it's got all sorts of cores and whatnot. And to be honest, I don't know all the terminology on this because I'm not a computer expert. I just built one once. Um, but it's got the HDMI connectors, which is going to be great for my monitor. Um, and it's got everything I need. And it's compatible with my motherboard, and that's all that really matters. So those are the parts. Now, we are putting all of those parts <laughs> inside this case. This is the Cylon RGB Flow Mid Tower case. Is that in focus? Now it's in focus. Um, so, honestly, 
there were other cases that I wanted. I was really looking at uh, cases by, um, what is it, NZXT. They make really nice looking cases, but I had a budget of $900, a very strict budget of $900 for this build, including the monitor. If I didn't have to buy a monitor, I could have gone a lot more powerful with this build, but unfortunately my monitor crapped out, so I needed to buy a new one. Uh, which is not pictured here, but I spent about 200 on the monitor, which left me about $700 for everything else. So that's why I only did 16 gigs of RAM, and that's why I went with this case. This case was the difference between me staying under budget by 20 bucks or going over by five. So I made the right choice. So now that we've got that out of the way, now that we've introduced all the parts, we're going to start putting this together. All right, so let's talk tools for the job. Um, there aren't many, right? So you're going to need a screwdriver, a Phillips head screwdriver. I prefer using a, a screwdriver with a magnetic head um, because these screws can be very tiny. And if you drop one in your case, you're going to be really upset that you didn't have a magnet to, put, to fish it out with. So, screwdriver. Um, the other tool you're going to need is an ESD strap. If you're like me and you live in an apartment, it's probably carpeted. What happens with carpet? Well, you build up static electricity. The electricity discharges from your body onto your CPU parts. You're likely going to fry them and they're going to be useless to you. So you use this strap. It's got a little metal conductor on the back. Put it on your wrist. This part stays tethered to something that's metal. That way, if any static does build up in your body, it automatically flows from your wrist to whatever metal surface you clip it to, which is probably going to be your CPU case and um, nothing is fried. So now that we've got the tools for the job out of the way, actually I'm going to go ahead and put this on and I'm going to bring the CPU up here. Go ahead and connect this here. And let's take out this case. So, again, I chose this case primarily um, because of the cost. It was the least expensive case I could find that still looked cool and was big enough to where I thought the airflow would be good. Um, and now that I've got it in hand, I like it a lot. I like this a lot. Nice. Very nice. And we've got some instructions if we reach in here. Actually, reaching in is probably not a good idea. Um, what we will do is we'll use the screwdriver to take this front plate off. And there's a little plastic protection here on this glass window, or it's not glass, it's actually plastic. But I'm gonna leave that plastic on until we're done building. Because the last thing we want is Fingerprints on the clear pane. Let's see, the plastic's actually wrapped around this one. I have to rip this off a little bit. There we go. Of course. Maybe I can just break it. There we go. So of course the screw is wrapped in plastic. So now we've done that, you can see inside the case. Actually, I don't know how well you can see because of the lighting, but I like this a lot. Uh, this is gonna give us plenty of room to work. I love that you've got this here for the power supply. Um, so yeah, I'm actually gonna move this now. This part's metal. Because we're not gonna worry about the uh, case just yet. Nothing's going in the case. I am now tethered to the case though. Put these instructions off to the side. And let's get into our motherboard. Now, with your motherboard, it's gonna come in an, an anti-static bag. Um, because of that static electricity I was just talking about, 
Now we should be more than safe with our ESD strap on. It's gonna come with your IO shield, which is basically where all the ports are gonna come out. Got some cables here. It's like a SATA cable, two SATA cables actually. Motherboard driver disc and stickers, cool. And we've got instructions, which I am going to read because I'm not an expert, are you? Yeah, these are gonna be instructions for mounting your CPU and the fan, which is the first thing we're actually gonna do. Actually, we're gonna need this box, we're gonna keep the CP, the motherboard on top of this box. So, all right, so now that we've got that open, let's get into our CPU. Of course, I left my blade. Got my certificate of authenticity, which I didn't even know you needed that on a, on a CPU. Here we are. Here's our CPU fan. Here is the CPU, along with stickers. I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to see this, but this is the motherboard. And here is your CPU slot. The CPU is the brain of your computer. Uh, but you want to be very careful, as you can not quite see. There's a lot of little tiny pins. What we're going to do is we're going to lift up on this lever. And that actually opens up the pins. Now, on your CPU, you do not want to touch the top of it. We're going to do our best to just lift it by the sides. And, um, and the reason for that is you don't want the oils from your fingers on here at all. Now what we've got is we're gonna have a little arrow on the CPU, which lines up with a little arrow on the motherboard. If I had a cameraman, you guys would get a better look at this, but I don't. So I'm gonna try to get this placement just right, and when it's just right, it should just drop in there. And that is not just right. All right, sorry guys, had to reconfigure. Um, I figured it'd be better to give you guys a little bit of a view. Although of course you can't see every detail. Um, had a little bit of a mishap. I actually thought I had broken the CPU. Um, so again, I'm not an expert. Now what's amazing about building a computer is it comes with instructions and everything is labeled. So you should not have a problem as long as you're not like me and impatient. So be patient, guys. Uh, one part of the process that I left out was on the motherboard, um, you actually had these little mounting plates here for your CPU cooler. Um, we don't need those because they're for a different type of cooler. So the next thing I'm going to do, I've got my CPU mounted. I'm going to mount the CPU cooler or the CPU fan. Now, um, what's important about this, you see these four screws here. Oh, do you? So you've got these, you've got four screws on these sides here. And this is not a square, it's like an, it's a rectangle. So what we need to do is we've got to figure out what the best way to mount this would be without actually pressing this down. So this grayish stuff here um, that you can see in the middle is actually thermal paste. So once we put this down on that metal contact for the CPU, you don't want to lift it up again. So I'm just kind of testing things out to see. Basically what I'm looking to see is, um, depending on where, which way I orient this, where my cord is going to have to go for my fan. There's a plug right here that I've got to plug the CPU fan into. And I don't want to have to do all sorts of ground or crazy work to get that to plug back in. So let's see if it will reach from here. And then it looks like you're going to have plenty of clearance. So I'm going to mount it with the AMD facing up the same direction as the actual um, CPU. So let's just kind of place this down into the screw holes. All right. 
and trusty screwdriver. So let's start to screw it down. I'm gonna screw it little by little. That way the paste actually spreads evenly. And it does have a little, uh, it's got little springs on it. So that's to help keep us from over tightening. Right, so everything that can go wrong is going wrong. All right, guys, so now my CPU fan is mounted correctly, and um, I'm gonna move on to the RAM, right? There's not really a order that you have to do this in. I'm just doing it in the order that's fun for me. So I've opened up my two sticks of RAM. Now, one thing that I just realized, um, as soon as I finished putting on the fan is I did not leave myself enough room to get into this last RAM slot. Oh wait, we might be able to make it work. But um, yeah, nah, so there's not clearance there. So that's something to think about when you're mounting your CPU fan. Um, I'm gonna dismount this at some point, but not right now because I would have to buy thermal paste since I just botched this job. So, um, Luckily, now on your RAM, I've got, there's actually a spot on the motherboard that says where to put the first two slots. So we're supposed to do this one and this one. So luckily I don't have to worry about this last, this fourth dim spot. So with RAM, you actually can't put it in backwards um, because this is not quite in the center. It's longer on one side. So like this is actually forward so in order to place your RAM just kind of drop it down in there and then you press it down and it's gonna click on both sides and that's how you know it is securely in place so we've got our first stick and the second vengeance I probably should put this light on the other side so you guys can see a little bit better Give me a second, I'll do that. All right, so now you got more light. So there you go. Vengeance LPX. So again, it's just these two tabs. You're gonna push apart, and then you will lay the RAM down in the tray. Just push it down. And it clicks right into place. So yeah, as you can see, I don't have a spot for that I don't have room for that third spot. So um, yeah, next time I will mount this <laughs> facing the other direction. Next thing to install is our Samsung SSD, 970 Evo Plus. All right. So where this goes, there is a little spot right here. I don't know how well you can see that. And this kind of slides into the top of that spot. So let's do that here. And I'm just going to push it in place. So you see it's kind of sticking up. And you actually would need a screw to mount it right there. So um, we are going to just test out this screw that we took off the CPU mount. Let's see if that works. I mean, a screw is a screw. You just don't want it flopping around so that it doesn't fall out. And that's all we want. So, is that everything? That's everything that's going to go on the motherboard. So, fairly simple. RAM, SSD, CPU, and the fan were actually the hardest part, which is supposed to be pretty easy. <laughs> um, so, next thing we're going to do is mount our power supply inside the case. All right. So now we have reached the part of building a PC that is deceptively hard, right? So we're just kind of framing stuff up, right? So I've got the case up and first thing we got to do is make sure these little gold uh, brackets, I don't even know if you can see those, if they show up on camera. We want to make sure that these are in the right spaces. Now this is an ATX 
uh, case and this is an ATX motherboard so we shouldn't have to do any moving things around to make sure they fit but um, we're gonna double check so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay the computer down and then I am going to basically set our motherboard here so your case is actually going to come with a bag of standoffs. What is a standoff? Standoffs are these little gold mounting pieces. Let's be very careful with this. And I'm literally going to do these one at a time because I do not want to lose any of this. All right, so let's take these back off. All right, and I can see. I'll move the camera. I'll take the camera with me. Alright, so you can see there's little bits of gold. Um oh, the shutter speed here. So little bits of gold here and there in that corner. Um, so yeah, you can kind of see where the little holes are, but if you don't see a little speck of gold inside that hole, that means there's not a standoff there. So I've got a Put one here, gotta add one here, here, and that bottom corner. All right, so now all the standoffs have been installed where they belong. All right, so installing our motherboard, I'm gonna grab it by the CPU cooler, since that's about the strongest point right here. And I'm kinda, I don't know if you can really tell, but dropping it in, going down, and then over. You guys can't see, but I can, that it's gonna have to be pushed in a little bit further. But the important part is that we're lined up with the IO shield. So, moment of truth. It's important to use the right screw. One, so that you don't mess up any of your parts, and also, so that everything stays together correctly. All right, now you don't want to over tighten this. Just kind of get it secure. There we go. It may flex a little bit, but don't worry, you're not going to break it. All right, so our motherboard is in. Now, let's put the power supply in next. Just knocked over a bunch of screws, that's all. It's okay. All right. Let's get some light over here. So we can see what we're doing. All right. So, this back plate of the case actually comes off here. So I'm going to take that off. Here's the other side. All right. So. There's the back of the motherboard that you just mounted. You can see your standoffs. This is actually an SSD mount. Um, here's another one. Your hard disks will actually go in here if you decided to mount with hard disks. And um, if not, that space can just stay empty. Um, I actually do plan to mount a hard disk here. I've got some, uh, got some hard disks from my old machine, but they're not going to go in just yet. Now, what is going to go in is your power supply. It actually mounts through the side here. Just kind of place it in, push it forward. Once you push it forward, you will see where there are screw holes that line up. Right down here. So let's go ahead and screw that in now. Now the cool thing is your motherboard or your case is going to actually tell you which screws go for what. So these little square headed screws are for our power supply. Unit. All
All right, so now we've got all that mounted. We gotta put this graphics card in. Wow, this thing just looks cool. So, fun fact, remove before gaming. This pops out, so it's this one. So we'll put that, set that back down. All right, actually I don't need both of these blocked off. I only need the one. So, ha, huh. we forgot to take the plastic protecting piece off. Now this should go much smoother. We gotta screw this down. All right, so let's recap what we've done so far, shall we? All right, we shall. So, so far we've installed our CPU and the CPU fan, which went on top of it. It's there. Then we installed our RAM, which goes right there. Um, we installed our SSD hard drive, which is there. And we have now, we have now mounted our graphics card. Um, we also mounted the power supply, which is down here, which of course is where everything is going to be powered. So now it's time to wire everything. Basically, we've got a bunch of power coming from all the cables that are attached to our power supply. So we've got to map these out. Now, a lot of these are not going to be used. We're going to have to just kind of tuck them in somewhere. But the ones that are going to be used, we've got to find them and actually plug them in to their respective slots on the motherboard. Now, there are also fan or fans. There are also cords that came with our case that are going to do a few different things, right? So we've got an SD card slot up top. So one of these cords has to plug into the motherboard for that. We've got USB 3.0 slots up top. So gotta plug in for that. Um, we've got a light for the uh, drive, just showing that the drive is on. We've also got an RGB strip at the front. All that's gotta be plugged in to a space on the motherboard and then we've got to get the power to the motherboard from the power supply. So we come back and have all that done. All right, you guys, so I have to apologize for uh, leaving you hanging, but that, would, but that was way harder than I thought it was gonna be. Um, so we got everything wired. Oh. Well, guys, Thank you so much for watching me build that machine. As you can see, it was not a total fail, although it looked like it was all throughout. <laughs> so if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on more music business tips and tricks. And I will see you in another video very soon. Peace.